Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's On the Sofa and Monday Night panel. Um, we're having a bit of a problem with getting people at the moment, so uh, you might have to have a chat with us for a bit. Um, but hopefully, everybody will start coming on in a moment. So, um, so the running order for tonight is we were hoping for somebody from the club shop. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it this evening, um, so they won't be coming on. Um, and Mr. Caddis was coming on, but he hasn't showed up yet. So um, we'll, uh, we're just waiting for him to come on. And then the plan was after we'd finished with Paul that we had a panel. Um, so we've got some members already um, on stream, so we could uh, go straight to that if we needed to. Just a couple of things. Thank you very much, everybody who's renewed their season. Uh, sorry, I'll start again. <laughs> renewed their OSC memberships. Um, we have had a delay in getting the cards. Um, we've started sending them out, but they may take a couple of weeks. So don't worry if you haven't received any. And also, we've had a bit of trouble with the Royal Mail. Um, I've sent out some badges and two people have already um reported that the envelopes were empty when they got them um, which is a bit of a coincidence uh, I know I put them in there so I have reported it to the um, Royal Mail just to see if there's something um, amiss there but if you have got a um, waiting for a badge or a key fob and you do get an empty envelope please let me know and we can uh, send another one to you okay let's bring Vic on good evening Vic oh uh, very good evening to you Chris and you um okay? Yeah, I'm all right. Apologies for being uh, looking dishevelled, but I've been coast path walking today. So. You have, haven't you? 14 miles for you today? Uh, well, I only managed nine today because of uh, delays getting down to Torbay because of, sadly, road traffic accidents. But that's another story. Um, but yeah, nine miles in the heat. Lovely. Um, Very nice too. In beautiful Torbay. What's not to like? Really? Exactly. No, that's good. And we have a head coach. We do. Announced, uh, well, around about half past four, I guess it was, wasn't it? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Scott Lindsay is the new head coach of Sydney Town. Um, obviously in the coaching staff already. So knows the club, knows yeah. the players, knows what the fans want, I think. So we'll see. Obviously, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's a good move. Um, as you say, he knows the club, he knows the players. Um, and if the players obviously get on with him, so... Uh, yeah, hopefully now we'll get some news about um, contracts and uh, signings. So that's the next thing. Um, um, yeah, and also, I'd like to say I got my new shirt look behind me uh, arrived today. So um, thank you very much, indeed for those concerned. Put yeah. the order in last week, and there it is. Lovely. Yes, that's what I was going to say, actually, with the um, club stuff not being here. So we've had the refurbishment of the club done. Um, looks all very nice. A lot more space in there um kits were launched on thursday i went down lunchtime and i was amazed at the number of people down there queuing to get in and everything and the number of shirts that were being sold uh, i actually had to come away without one because i didn't have time to wait but uh, i'll get one on the next uh, round of them um so yes yeah, so it's going to be probably end of july when the next uh, lot of shirts are in so hopefully they will be here for before the season starts um yeah, so that's that. So, Vic, should we start with getting the people we've got on the panel here until see if Paul turns up? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And of course, as soon as he does turn up, then we'll, yeah, um, we'll switch these lot off. Yeah, yes, we'll get rid switch of them. Yeah, quite, quite right. <laughs> okay, so we've got Rob, we've got Hello. Andy, and we've actually recruited Anthony to the panel. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Allowed out the front this week. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I will leave you and I will see you later. I'll just put Paul straight on if he comes on, okay? Lovely. Well, uh, yeah, hopefully get a surprise in a moment or two when he does arrive. So that'd be great. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dee, Chris. Welcome along. A momentous day in the history of Swindon Town Football Club. Uh, we've waited for this appointment for some weeks uh, since the departure of Ben Garner to Charlton Athletic. Um, Rob? Your reaction uh, to the appointment of Scott Lindsay? Underwhelmed, if I'm honest, um, but not surprised. I think we've talked about this for the last few weeks, haven't we, that we expected there to be uh, an appointment of possibly an under-23 manager, certainly somebody who wasn't particularly high profile. Um, the very nature of the fact that it's our former assistant manager just makes begs the question as to why it's taken so long, doesn't it? Um, since Ben Garner left for Charlton and 
obviously we only have more questions i guess at this stage than answers i'm sure it will become clear over the coming days but uh i've got all respect for scott Lindsay. he did a cracking job as a, a coach for us last season obviously this is a step up i know head coach is the new title but what who works under him what the players now how they now respond to him is obviously the most important thing and if if the the continuity of a, a person who was here before means that the likes of a Jack Payne resigns, the likes of the uh, the players who are out of contract all resign, and then we get some decent players on board, I don't think too many people have too many problems with it. But as I say, in terms of, I think everyone hangs their hat on a massive appointment, don't they? I don't think they were necessarily being realistic. But whenever you hear a name that you're very familiar with, that's not a big name that's going to be your manager, then you always get that same feeling. Yeah, um, hopefully we'll get um, uh, Scott Lindsay on at some point in the not too distant future to have a chat with him because obviously I should, should imagine today he's not quite worked out what day of the week it is. It's that sort of a day uh, for a new head coach stroke manager. Uh, Jamie, hello to you. Welcome. Uh, uh, afternoon, evening. For your sudden arrival, that was, uh, yes, we were expected Paul Caddis. We got uh, Jamie Newton. That's not a bad swap, to be fair. Um, right, let me go through some of the comments coming in already. Andy says, not you, Andy. Another one. Uh, smacks a second or third choice, having taken so long to sort out. Still hope he does a brilliant job. Uh, Malcolm says, so what happens to the other Scott? Marshall. Well, we don't know is the answer to that. Uh, Matt Taylor says, uh, glad and um, it wasn't a Matt Taylor who got a point. There was a Matt Taylor playing cricket for Gloucestershire, I think, on Saturday, on Friday as well. So there are many Matt Taylors. Uh, glad the management hunt is over. Uh, given the model at the club, it was inevitable we were after a talented coach who can develop the players. Uh, we now have that, but with the bonus of continuity. Our fans need to give their head a wobble if they're writing him off already. Andy, your reaction? Well, just as Matt said there, um, a surprise. Um, I suppose we all get, as you said, get carried away with all the names and everything like that. I suppose it was pared down when uh, Sandro uh, was was appointed the technical director. You're obviously going to have a go down the coach route rather than an overall manager. Um, but I mean, I'm none the wiser to anyone. I thought it might have been a um, a Mark Delaney or a Potts and everything like that. But then you're obviously looking at money. But I'm pleased because that big word continuity. I think Rob said it. Uh, the Scott obviously has worked with these players last year, uh, and hopefully, I mean, for all we know, he could have been could be work could have been working in these last few weeks because he's been officially employed by the club, has he not? And so the the sort of the things that go on in pre season, I believe they're back today, so I'm sure he's had a lot to do with that, uh, and and hopefully they've got you know his confidence and, and vice versa. So those players like Akin. Uh, who, who, who've been offered a contract, Harry Parsons, uh, Matty Baudry, uh, and, and obviously Jack Payne, which is the big one. Uh, hopefully we can get those uh, those contracts signed. And uh, there's, a, there's that continuity. And we're going into this season far, far better than we were last year uh, with, with very similar amount of players. Andy, stand up and show us your shirt, as they say. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason for this. Yeah. You've been chosen to play for Brazil. That's the reason, is it? Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, they think I'm good enough. No, um, it was following last week, one of the last uh, podcasts. Liam was on with his Turkish third team, uh, yeah, third was, division, yeah. third team. So I thought, right, this is a good opportunity to put a retro shirt on. Um, uh, that's one reason. Another, of course, um, we're going to need a colour. Other than red and white, are we not for the shirts? We need a third shirt, don't we? Unless we play the likes of Crawley and Doncaster, because I think they play in red and in white. So why not yellow and green? Because um, that did us okay last year. Okay. Uh, we're not going to play in the Brazilian national kit, I don't think. Uh, Jackie says, I'm very surprised about the new head coach. Not that he's not a good pick, but that it's taken so long to choose someone who was already here. Uh, bearing in mind all the candidates that were put up as hopeful ones. Jason says, I couldn't have cared less who takes over as head coach as long as they give 100% and have more fan involvement is all I care about. Um, Anthony Reeves from the Supporters Club. Thank you very much indeed. I think it's your debut. Is it your debut on the it Monday night? It is my night? debut, yeah. I've, I've, I've introduced you a couple of times. Uh, yes. But that is it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, right, what's your view then? Um, I, yeah, I agree with the others. It, 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 
adds an element of consistency to the club. Um, you know, initially the, the talk was that both Scots were going to follow Ben Garner to Charlton. Um, and it was a case of sorting out the um, the compensation. Um, it seems that once, you know, the, the conversation can be agreed that we've we've jumped on it straight away. Um, I think, yeah, I think your, your heart always says that, you know, you want a Michael Carrick or, or, or someone like that. Um, but, you know, you win your first five, ten games of the season or something, you'd be naive to think they're going to stay here long term. Um, Scott's been here before, he's come back, you know, he, he's obviously trusted by the players, otherwise they wouldn't, you know, they would. <laughs> Clem and Rob and, and Zav aren't going to employ him if he doesn't get on with them. So um, I think it's a positive. We've got to, um, we've got to get behind him now, haven't we? You know, we've got a nucleus of a team. Um, you know, and I, I know, you know, having spoken to to Rob and, and Clem sort of a few weeks back, you know, they, they they're, they're working hard behind the scenes. So, you know, uh, Andy said a lot more positive than last season. Um, you know, I'm always positive going into every season, to be perfectly honest. Um, but yeah, no, let's, let's get behind them, and uh, we've got to give them a go, haven't we? Well, Sean sort of picks up on that. He says, uh, "I've seen earlier the moaners are out." I, for one, did say Ben Who last year, but didn't do too bad, did we? So there we We've are. We've got a history of, of, of trying managers for the first time, haven't we? And you think sort of over the past 20, 30 years, probably, you know, all, all the first team or first time managers have generally done, you know, reasonably well, where the the, the, the old heads, you know, the, the, the Phil Browns, etc., um, tend to fall short. Well, we'll see. Of course, uh, the acid test will be starting on the 30th of July. Uh, Jamie, your view? Um, I think I think we have to trust there's been a process um, until we hear different or until something changes our minds. But presumably they've been through a process. They haven't rushed into it. Um, and you'd hope that he obviously put his hat in the ring or someone put his hat in the ring and, and that he came out as, as one of the best options that we'd, we'd got. Um, I guess we all, we all sat here end of the last season hoping for a quiet summer just move on and start build on last year. Well, I guess it's probably as close as you're going to get is to take someone that was part of last year and part of the, the team who hopefully knows the strengths and the weaknesses of what we had before and can build on it. Um, and we're now that, not that far from pre-season stroke, um, the, the the start of the season. So it's not someone coming in, taking the next three or four weeks to try and work out who the players are, what he's got, what he hasn't got. At least, at least hopefully we're a bit further down that track. And I think we've all we've all kind of said it's easy to want a big name, but we're here to support the club. And we're here to support whoever's at the top of it, isn't it? At the end of the day, and let's see how he gets on. Yeah, um, Alex. Uh, hello, Alex. Nice to hear from you. Uh, delighted for Scott. Uh, bring on the new season up the Reds. Let's get behind him. And surely the fact that the club has spoken to others and gone through due diligence to make sure they have the right man is even more reason to be positive. He's a great coach, a top man, and I'm really buzzing to continue to work for and with him. Alex, thanks very much indeed for that. Joe, hello to you. I'm sorry, I was a bit disorganised, but I thought well, I was late and I was in the shower. So. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Let's leave it there. <laughs> so, uh, what's your what's your view? Um, I don't know what's been said, so I might be repeating it, but it just feels like, well, a bit underwhelmed and disappointed, if I'm honest. Feels like it's taken a long time, which says to me that he wasn't first choice. Um, and it's probably a little bit of, couldn't agree compensation with Charlton. So, we've ended up keeping him here. I don't know. If I'm honest, it just feels like a bit of a cheapskate option. That's that's my opinion on it. But I hope he does well and I'll back him. But yeah, just not particularly exciting. OK. The last um, time we had a, a marquee manager coming in, Tim Sherwood. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? So Mo moving swiftly on from that. Um, <laughs> Paddy says, I'll be honest, uh, very underwhelmed tonight. That's no disrespect to Scott Lindsay either, uh, but it just feels a cheap appointment. And if we're carrying on to the same cheap way of operating as uh, Mr. Power did, it's disappointing after a year of Clem the saviour. Paddy, thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, let's have a look. Right. Um, now, we've got a lot of view new viewers tonight, so which is lovely. So we're going to go around the panel so you can all introduce yourself. So uh, let's do that, shall we? Uh, what you are, who you are, and and uh, how long you've been supporting the town. Rob, away you go. Uh, oh, uh, well, there we go, Rob Hartley. I'm 52 at least, and a bit more. 
And I think I've been supporting them now for probably 48, 49 years, it feels like, pretty much from cradle to grave. Hopefully not grave too soon. <laughs> Sometimes it drives us near there, though, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's be fair. Andy, away you go. Yes, yeah, started uh, following the town uh, August 1974. Uh, never lived in Swindon, so uh, you know, dotted around all over the country, uh, but followed them, you know, since then, and now we're uh, regularly going to see them from uh, from Dorset. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, good old Dorset. Now, uh, yeah, neighbouring county. Nice, nice to have you along. Um, let's have, uh, Mr. Anthony Reeves already said you're a member of the committee of the um, official supporters club and indeed the advisory board. Um, but do you want to add a bit more? <laughs> yeah, uh, I've been uh, coming uh, to Swindon for, uh, this is my 34th season coming up. I uh, had a bit of a hard upbringing. I grew up in, deep in uh, yellow territory. Um, so, uh, yeah, I had a, had a bit of uh, bit of hassle from uh, some schoolmates uh, growing up. But um, as soon as I could, uh, bought a house in Swindon. And, uh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> That's pretty good at the age of 11. I think you did well there, didn't you? <laughs> uh, Jamie, uh, home and away fan, so a little bit more, please. Yeah, so I've, I've, had a, I've been a season ticket holder for 35 years, something like that. Um, introduced by my dad um, and never stopped going since. And yeah, spend half my life on a coach or travelling up and down the M5, M6, it feels like anyway. Um, yeah, home and, away season, for... <laughs> <laughs> home and away for a good... 20 years probably yeah and joe finally same take um my dad took me i think when i was about eight so i'm the oldest i've got two younger brothers and i've sort of been going ever since so about 38 years or so something like that with a few breaks in between but i've had a season ticket in the same seat for about the last 18 seasons now and i'm vic and i've been uh following the town since february 1968 that was my first game and before but i was too young to go on my own but then I found a bus that went in Swindon on a Saturday and that was it. Saw the green pitch and it, well, though it was kind of more sandy coloured in those days in February of 68 than it is now. Uh, and that's that really. Uh, so that's who we are. And every Monday we convene and talk to uh, talk about the matters of Swindon town. Let me read you some of the comments that I have here, which are loads of them. Um, right. Hello, Carl. There's an interview apparently with Scott on I, online at BBC Sounds. He comes over quite well, wants to play a more aggressive brand of attacking football than the prior year. Um, uh, Sa oh, uh, yeah, uh, Sandro Dimichele is on there too. He explained he wanted to see a bunch of candidates to make sure he got the right person, not an easy appointment. Easy to say, I guess, but again, came over positive. Hopefully we can hit the ground running. Now with the community factor, a new man would have to start from scratch. Um, Alan says, as Paul Callis, Caddis is not on the way, he's on the way to the county grounds number two. Well, <laughs> we don't know. Hello to old Duffer Ratter. Uh, I'm pleased with the manager choice as long as uh, the manager gets us where we need to be. I'd even take Jonah the Kitman if he could get us promotion. Let's get 100% behind him. I think it's a clever and shrewd move. Uh, Ian says, why are people obsessed with names? Much better to go with a highly respected coach who knows the club and popular with the players. And Dan says, understand why some fans feel underwhelmed by the appointment of Scott Lindsay, but it's a move that makes sense with the fact that he's worked with the players who are currently here and is a very respected coach. Don't agree with the cheap option remarks, but bringing in a marquee name manager usually means they'll be gone in a few months because a bigger club comes in for them. Yeah. It's always a danger, Rob, isn't it? We've seen that many times before. We have, and... Um... The, the breeding ground for success, Swindon Town, most of the time for a lot of managers, isn't it? Um, we've started a lot of managerial careers off for a lot of play, former players and, and, and good managers. So um, it is it is one of those factors. If you bring in a marquee, if you bring in a player from a, a much, much bigger club, then the, he's always going to be in the shop window, isn't he? It's one of those things. People will look at his progress. They'll chart it more. I don't think many people had Ben Garner on their radar last year. And that surprised us even more, I think, when he disappeared to Charlton, um, because we thought we had a safe pair of hands as far as that was concerned, mm. but uh, mm. not to be. Um, Scott Lindsay obviously has got uh, a, a completely different CV to some of the people who we've been talking about on the panel in previous weeks. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's not going to be able to be successful as a manager, is it? That's the thing. And it's, it's, it's what he does for the club from this point forward. I don't think... 
any of us can really judge. I think people have been very premature from some of the comments I've seen already to say he's not what we need. He's not the not the answer to our problems. I'm not going to go anymore. Don't know where these people are coming from. The, the reality is we all back this club. We're Swindon supporters through and through. And the one thing we want to see is success on the pitch. I don't care if it's a, if it's a garden rake in charge of our football club, to be quite frank. If we're going to win every game, I don't care. It makes no difference to me. Um, so let's just back him for now. We know no different. Let's hope that uh, he's got the um, the full support of the players. Like I said earlier on, if we can get those players' contracts sorted, that's the key thing now. We've been talking and talking and talking about a coach for what feels like an age now, but we know mm. we're starting pre-season training this week. We're what, five weeks away from the first game of the season. We need that squad sorted. We need those players. There's a lot of good players now who've already been picked up by other clubs. So we need to get our contract situation sorted out immediately with all those players who are out of contract and get some good more some more names back on board. Andy, what about negativity? I mean, let's be honest, we're Swindon fans. So the, how much of us is percentage of negativity? Well, there's a little bit, let's be honest, because we kind of like to be negative from time to time. How do we get over that? Results. At the end of the day, I mean, I can understand where people are coming from. They're saying, you know, they're after this marquee signing, uh, you know, this is the second or third choice and everything like that. And it's probably, you know, typical Swindon's probably typical any football fan uh, are like that. You know, what is it we wanted? Uh, if we'd have got a big, big signing, then then that person comes with a, a, a large a large wage and that might have sort of, you know, bitten into our budget. Um it all comes down to if Scott Lindsay, um, who incidentally, I think for those people that didn't like Garner because he wasn't passionate, I've certainly seen Scott Lindsay uh, go for it on the on the touchline uh, last season. He certainly got passion. Um, I think we've got to give yeah, give him a chance. The minute we, we go, you know, six games in and we've won three of them and drawn two of them, uh, people will be going, oh, we quite like him, you know. But we we love it, don't we? And we're used to it with Swindon, you know. Uh, we, we love a bit of up and down. so <laughs> We've seen enough of it. Uh, Jason yeah. says, unfortunately, Klopp, Guardiola, Guardiola and Tuchel weren't available. Um, mm. so, yeah, Southgate nearly was. Sorry? Southgate nearly <laughs> 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 Yes. Any more results like the other night? It might well be. You never know. <laughs> uh, Anthony, I, I, I just wanted to move on to a slightly different tack because I don't know um, how much you've been involved with this. Um, but there's a plaque on the back of the town end, isn't there? Uh, with all the people who waved their, their season tickets uh, a year or so ago with their names on. I can tell you that Somerset County Cricket Club have done precisely the same thing, but they've done it to form a picture of Marcus Strascothic, and it's really quite tastefully done. Somebody joked that the Swindon was all the list of management appoint, uh, possibilities in the last <laughs> week, which I thought was quite funny. But, um, you know, what's the thinking behind that? It's a, it, it, I think it's a, it's a great idea by the club. It, it, it sort of puts uh, there forever, you know, their thanks to the, the fans who, who have helped keep the club going. You know, let's, you know, we always hark back to last season where we started, you know, with five players and, you know, Clem's come into the club and he didn't know, you know, literally didn't know what financial state the club was, was in, really. Um, you know, there's lots of skeletons that come out of the cupboard in the last year. And, um, you know, it just shows, you know, it's it's a way of them showing how grateful they are to us, the supporters, um, for, for sticking by them, sticking by the club and uh, and saying thank you. So have many people been seen? Sorry, Joe, what did you say? There's quite a lot of people been missed. Oh, um, have they? Yeah, saying that like one of their family names is on there, but not the rest and things like that, who didn't get their money back. So I don't know how they went through it and worked out who to go on it. I know they. Uh, I know they had. A, they did have a list, and they went through it. You know, several times. So um, I mean, I can't comment. You know, on, on exactly how they did it, but um, I, I know they did. They did. They did have a list, and there must be a record of those who who have asked for refunds and those who didn't. So um, I, I guess those people have got to contact the club and um, and see what they can do. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens because uh, it is things. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it is things like that that annoys people, Anthony, isn't it? And Oh, sure. You know, I'm, I'm sure the club are aware that it annoys people, and they don't do it deliberately. I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite sure. No, exactly. That. exactly. You know, they, they, they you know, it, it was, uh, it was all done with good intent, and I think, you know, on the whole, that you know, people appreciate it, and um, 
you know, it's not such they didn't have to do anything. You know, they could have just taken our money and said, you know, thank you very much and uh, and moved on. So, um, you know, I think it's nice. I know um, Warsaw did a similar thing as well. Um, uh, there's there's a, up on the back of one of their stands as well. So. Well, there we go. And um, you've been to see it, Rob, I think, haven't you? I have. I think it's very good. I have to say, I mean, it's a, obviously what Joe said is a little bit concerning because you'd hope that they would have got everybody included. But um, no, it's a, it's a it's a lovely uh, memento for people to to look at. It's, if you go to all of these other grounds, I know there are there are numerous different statues or whatnot that you look at and you think it, it sort of adds to the to to the whole experience when you go away from home when you look at things like that. And I think not only will Swindon fans take who were who were good enough to to sacrifice their money take some pleasure in it. I think it will become one of those things that a lot of people look for each each of these grounds coming forward. I think it's a really yeah. good idea. Yeah, um, I have to say, uh, Somerset, my name is just below Marcus Truscothic's nose, so I'm not quite <laughs> sure what that means. Uh, well, there you go. Um, Tony says, thinking it could be a good appointment, knowledge of the club and history, the only guy will be disappointed is Garner, as he'll stand on his own two feet and be accounted for his own actions. Interesting view, Tony. Thank you. I mean, what about that, Jamie, the, t the, the, the plaque and things like that? It, it is building bridges with the fans, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's the kind of thing where it doesn't, it shouldn't be a one-off. You know, it's, it's about having that forethought and, and that joining with the fans ongoing rather than it being a, a one-time idea. Hopefully we won't have to bail the club, up, club out again, but um, but it's the, the thought that goes with it. And it, yeah, it's made, also, it's adding something to look at, as you say, around the, around the actual ground, isn't it? It's something that, that covers up a blank wall, hopefully. <laughs> but I think yeah. that last point, actually, Vic, though, was really interesting because with with the, the the gardener point because i think we can all probably name managers or head coaches that turned out that they had someone behind them that was doing a lot of the work so for, for all we know actually lindsay was doing a lot of the the actual um thought and, and training with the players and and maybe it's not necessarily that a bad thing that it's someone behind the scenes i know when we all talked about um wise and poet it turned about poet that was the uh, the brains behind the partnership wasn't it so um, that's an interesting point someone's come up with. Yeah, very interesting. Um, uh, James says, I heard today we're after a goalkeeper from Middlesbrough. That's on a season-long loan, if I remember rightly. Uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but I did see that we're after him. I'm just looking through. Uh, there's a rumour. It's not actually agreed 100%, but um, we'll see what happens with that. So what does that mean for Jojo Wallacott, of course? Um yeah, what about these building bridges, Joe? You mentioned the fact that some people haven't got their names on, which would annoy people. And, and, yeah, and right, I've right so. seen quite a few people commenting on Twitter um, that, you know, that they someone in their family's name was on there, but theirs wasn't and things like that, which was a bit of a strange, bit of a strange one. I think it's quite a number of different people. And there was also a bit of a, a laugh going around because Lee Power's name's on there and Taylor Curran, but I don't know whether they're genuine supporters or whether it is. <laughs> just, uh, you know, by chance there's two supporters uh, with the same name or whether it was Lee Power and Taylor Curran. <laughs> that would be quite a coincidence if there was, wouldn't it? I mean, I so. if, if they are those supporters, would they like to get in touch? We'd love to speak to them. <laughs> <laughs> And how do people react to you when you actually say what your name is? That would be really interesting, wouldn't it? I mean, uh, what about players, then, Joe? Who do you? What do we think is needed? I mean, obviously, you know, there are crucial players like Jack Payne you yeah. would like to see stay. Definitely, and I suppose one of the positives of Scott Lindsay is that there is that relationship there, so that may encourage players who weren't sure what to do to stay if they get on well with him. Um, yeah, I mean, you need pain, you need, you need a couple up front. You need, still need a couple of strikers up front because we've really only got McCurdy. Um, and then defensively as well. I mean, there's still a fair few players short of a really good squad, I think. Um, and not a great deal of time now to get them in. But hopefully we'll start seeing a bit of movement now over the next few days. Yeah, that's the problem, Rob, isn't it? I mean, w with the change of coach, we're kind of a bit behind the curve like we were last year, really. But, hey, we hit the jackpot with Harry McCurdy, didn't we? There's no reason why we shouldn't hit the jackpot again. No, I mean, it's it's there's a lot of thought processes going to the uh, the management and the coaching side of the game. But when it comes to recruitment of players, 
a lot of the time it's, it's good luck as well as good fortune. As, and, and you look at Harry McCurdy as a classic example. I mean, those of us who saw those early pre-season games would never have believed the season that he went on to have. Um, so I, I think we can... We can give ourselves a little bit of comfort that there will be plenty of players out there still for us to go and purchase. The recruitment drive presumably will be of a similar nature to the type of players that we recruited last season because there's that little bit of continuity in coaching with Scott Lindsay taking over. Um, so I, I guess we should expect to see some younger players, I imagine, again. Hopefully not all low knees. We've had this debate before. We want to see Swindon players playing for Swindon. We don't want to see low knees all of the time. Low knees should just supplement what you've got within your own squad. Um, but I, 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 it's that it's that time factor again, isn't it? It's it, people have lost sight, I think, of the fact that we lose a week this year. We're kicking off on the thirtieth of July. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really quick start, and with us losing two weeks at the start of the at the end of the season because of having playoffs. Now having the management situation effectively taking four weeks to sort itself out as well, we've lost half of the half of the the close season, if not more. So there's a lot of work to be done in a very very short space of time. And Joe just covered off pretty much every area of the team. There's there's not one that you'd actually look at. Possibly as long as Jack Payne signs, we'd probably be okay in midfield. That's probably about it. Everywhere else still needs strengthening. Yeah. Um... Let me see. Uh, lots of things coming in. Uh, um, what about that, Andy, in terms of strengthening the squad? What are your thoughts? Uh, wh where do you think we are in terms of that? Well, keep harking back to last year um, and the miracles that happened. Um, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We don't know whether Scott Lindsay's been involved in the club at all, you know, since the Port Vale game. You know, obviously there was the rumours of him going, but he might have been doing some work behind the scenes. And you mustn't forget that contracts expire on June the 30th. There's not many people actually formally been signed. If you go on the, on the lists, there's, you know, I'm sure there's sort of pre-contract agreements, but, you know, not everyone's been snapped up yet. And we have got a little bit more time. Um, yeah, we do need to, um, for all all areas, we do need to improve. Of course, we're sort of, you know, we're losing Dion Conroy and people like that. And, you know, we, we did, as Rob said, rely very heavily on loan signings, especially up front. So there is a lot of work to do. But I think we're a long way, a lot further down the road than we were last year. I, I mean, if we can get these people signed on, the, the people that have been offered contracts, you know, we probably only need another sort of three or four players and with the loan signings as well to have a half-decent squad. And if I'm right in saying, I, I, has he not got a bigger budget uh, than we had last year? So, yeah, I think the big one for me is Jack Payne, the rumours of what he was earning, the rumours about uh, whether Lincoln City were assisting with the pay. But if we could get him, that would be... That would make yeah. my pre-season, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think it would most people's. Um, I've got a message. Chris has sent me this, uh, and it's come in from James Spencer from the Trust. Um, the club have got spare spaces on the plaque. If their name isn't on the plaque, please email supporters at swindontownfc.co.uk and we'll get that sorted. So that's supporters at swindontownfc.co.uk and hopefully um, those wrongs can be righted, as it were. Um, let me, let's move on to kits then, Anthony. I mean, uh, the demand has been extraordinary, hasn't it? And, um, you know, even though I'm quite a large, um, older chap, uh, you know, I, I'm not quite a 5XL yet uh, in white shirts. <laughs> I've got the new red one behind me, which is fine. But obviously they ran into big trouble, didn't they? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, I understand we ordered more than we did last year, um, but it's it's not enough. It's good to see, you know, f on you know from the club, it's good to see that there's there's that interest. People obviously like the kits. Um, it's just a shame they can't get more in the door to get them back out again, you know, to help towards the the, the, the transfer fund, I suppose, and uh, and the day to day running the club. Yeah, we would love to have asked somebody on the retail side about that tonight, but. Sadly, nobody was available. Uh, we did ask many times, but nobody could come forward because it's that sort of thing that people want to know about. And, uh, and I guess, you know, I don't suppose they knew what sort of demand they'd be getting. It's that simple. Isn't I it? think it's pretty hard to hard to, to gauge it. Bear in mind that we didn't have very many kits available last season, so we can't go off the numbers sold from, from last year. Um, 
I understand, you know, that these are going to be a lot easier to, to reorder. You know, the bespoke kit last season, you know, had a massive lead time on it and it wasn't feasible to order more kits in. Um, so, you know, there'll be, there'll be more in its way. We're just going to have to sit tight. It's, um, I've, I've got an eight-year-old who, who's nagging me daily, you know, have you got my shirt yet? Have you got my shirt yet? Um, and, you know, he, he won't be alone, you know. So, um, yeah, finger, fingers crossed uh, they come in soon. What about you, Jamie? Have you been down, got one all sorted? No, no, I haven't, I haven't got one. So first time for 30-odd years, I haven't had one um, straight away. So I think, I think the problem was they made... Yeah, you can you can feel for them because who knows exactly how big that demand was. Or I think it's interesting they haven't said how many they did sell. Um, as to, but I think it, it's like anything, the communication hasn't been very good, and that's all that we ask really, and that's all that people talk about. It shouldn't have taken them forty eight or I think it's probably three days before they actually commented on we'll have more in. That that should have been something that was quite an easy conversation to be able to have to say, calm down, stop panicking. That there will be more that will come in. We just don't know when yet. So I think that's the bit that people get wound up about. It's like, just communicate with people. If you don't know all the story, admit you don't know the whole story. Um, I think they just made a bit of a mess of releasing them all in one day where you didn't pre-order them. And like the reason I didn't get one is because I was I was, I was was working away for the day. So and I think I've seen a lot of people comment the same thing, that it just took out the whole option of certain people being able to, to order something that it's not really in their, their um, remit to do. But... I think as long as they solve it, as long as they keep talking to people, keep keep an update, you know, um, even if you can't say an exact date they're coming in, just keep communicating it. And that's all that people will ask. And I think that will just take the business out of all the frustrations and what's going out there. But yeah, it's great. They've sold a lot. Um, it's just that they're their own worst enemy at times. And that's the frustrating bit. It, it, it shouldn't be that difficult just to, to keep people informed of what's going on. Sure. Um, right. Let's. Follow. Oh, Tom says ordered my home shirt online on Thursday. Arrived today. Can't argue with that. Well, same here. So um, that's fair enough. Uh, Stephen says I, I don't believe there's an issue. Uh, more shirts have been ordered. They're coming in batches. Um, I, I guess that the thing is, Joe. People want them immediately, don't they? And, uh, and I think as well, a lot of people missed out last year, didn't they? So. That was a big thing last year. I mean, my son didn't have one for the first time in 15 years, I don't think. Um, and so, and on also on Thursday, was it Thursday when they went on? <laughs> I, yeah, sorry, um, <laughs> dog's barking. Um, there were people having problems buying online as well. It wasn't working for everybody. I know some people had to go through three or four times to sort of try and buy. So not everybody was able to get to the shop. So that was a bit of a problem as well. So people sort of obviously missed out by not being able to go down to the shop. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yes. I, I, yeah. I don't know how many been down to the shop and had a look at it. Is it have you been down, Joe, or, or not? No. Okay. No, I haven't had a chance, to be honest. And then I, I tried to get one online, and then the one the size that I wanted, they, they were sold out by 2 o'clock, I think, online, yeah. the way ones. Mm. Um, Gaz said, ordered in line, uh, home and away shirts Thursday, still waiting. Um, well, I, I, I guess they're getting through them as soon as possible. Now, some news has just come in about Ryan Giggs. He stood down as Wales manager. So I think that brings to an end his career as Welsh manager and... That means that Robert Page presumably will be full-time Welsh manager now, having got them. No, he's not our number two before anyone starts. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got a gig at the World Cup in uh, November, hasn't he? So uh, yeah. I think that will mean Rob Page will be Welsh manager now. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Liam says, uh, he of the Turkish third shirt, or whatever it was, um, Looking forward to the fixtures released on Thursday. We'll know where we're going, uh, panel, very shortly. We will. The Carabao Cup is 2 o'clock on Thursday afternoon, I think. Uh, we also know, Rob, that again, we'll be playing Plymouth Argyle in the uh, whatever it is cup, as well as Bristol Rovers. So um, I'm quite pleased if it's at home part, obviously. If it's no surprise. Down the yeah, yeah. Um, but it does seem to get the same teams we're, every year, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think there's a little bit of Papa John's pizza stuck to the Plymouth and Swindon ball, and it because it's together every year. But uh, it does seem to be the same the same team year after year after year, which is a bit of a shame because there's enough enough clubs in the southwest for us to draw other than Plymouth and Bristol Rovers and Newport. It seems to be those three all the time. Um, I'm sure we'll end up with Chelsea under 21s for the umpteenth time as well, just to finish the group off. But we'll uh, 
we'll wait and see. But um, yeah, I mean, it's this. This is this is the thing, isn't it? I mean, we're a little bit, a little bit down, a little bit dour tonight. We should actually be full of beans. Yeah, we should. Out this week, new manager's yeah. been appointed. New players, hopefully, on the way. Um, maybe, maybe this is that. This is the start of where it all picks up for us this summer. But uh, I think it's uh, it's it's always an exciting week. When you when you know fixtures are being released, and you, uh, you we all start to chart where we're going to go, when we're going to go, don't we? And uh, we, hope, we hopefully don't get that sinking feeling that we're at Tranmere on a Tuesday night in the middle of December and Carlisle on a Tuesday night in the middle of February. But somehow you suspect that's on our on our radar this year with a number of northern sides. So I think we need to brace ourselves a little bit for <laughs> what might be a horrible fixture list this year. Yeah, I, yeah, we've done Hartley Pool away on Friday night, haven't we? Um, before I presumably done it on a Tuesday, I don't know, but Barrow on a Tuesday will be a new experience for many and uh, not a pleasurable one, really. Uh, Ian says we need 10 to 12 new players minimum, mainly defensive and forward areas, def definitely more quality as in strength in depth because our bench was incredibly poor for months. Need more steel in the squad and uh, a more vocal element on the pitch. We were so quiet. I think that's a criticism that's been levelled many times. Lee says uh, there's pretty much zero captain material in the squad. That has to be the priority. And if we have to pay a fee, so be it. Um, and says, let's get behind the town and look at the positives. It's sad to hear, again, such negativity. Come on, you Reds. Um, Alex says, well done, Rob. You just jinxed it. So we are going to go to Barrow on a Tuesday night. <laughs> you so, said Barrow. I didn't. <laughs> oh, no, that's true. I've just jinxed it. Um, so we, it's the, when we get to know the third team in the group then, I've never quite understand why they don't all draw them out at the same time. I think it's all Thursday, isn't it? I think we got the, we got the, uh, the, the full league fixture list on Thursday. I know we've got the Carabao Cup draw in the afternoon on Thursday, and I believe we're getting the... Uh, the under twenty one team as well in the group announced on Thursday, so it's uh, wow, a bit busy how day. exciting! Yeah. yeah, very exciting. Uh, right, yeah, we ought, be, we ought to be thankful that we've got a couple of teams that we're playing that are in the southwest, aren't we? Even it is the Papa Johns or whatever. Yeah, but don't forget, Andy. For us, unlike Vic, it takes it's longer to get to Plymouth than it is to get to Crew. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, well, uh, Vic can <laughs> go along the coast path. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can actually walk along it um, from there. Uh, Ian says, Boxing Day away at Carlisle, if the EFL computer works as normal. See, that is the problem, Andy, isn't it? There's so many northern teams. You've got a fair chance, um, you know, that you're going to get a northern team on Boxing Day or something. Yeah, they don't like playing. It's only sort of the conference sides. That they just don't like the local derbies around Christmas, do they? I mean, all right, we might get Northampton or something like that. But, uh, yes. Yeah, brace ourselves for for some for some long trips you know uh, i think me and you are going to sort of break the twelve thousand miles i think again uh but it is what it is isn't it and um yeah we have got to be positive like i you know i, I think you know it's like rob says let's let's compare ourselves to where we were last year and we had a fan, fantastic season if we can keep these players don't forget we've got the johnny williams sign we've got the louis reed signed and everything mm -hmm. like that yeah. With, with some with with some continuity with with Scott, um, you know he he's 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 already come out and said he's going to take a, a more attacking brand of football. Um, we get our home performances up together. There's still the buzz around the around the town, isn't there? From what I gather, I mean, look at look at the shirt sales. You know, what's to stop us not getting sort of ten thousand home gates now with a decent home performance? The place could be rocking. You know, so it could be a very very exciting year. Um, yeah, really let's hope so. Yeah, we, we should really, really look forward to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sean says, got an email. Shirts can be pre-ordered now. So there you go. Um, let's see what happens with that. Um, James says, with five sub-changes from the EFL this season, quality of squad sizes needs to be strong. Otherwise, we will lose out to teams with bigger, better squads. That That is a point, isn't it, Anthony? That, you know, five substitutes this year. You've got five players who can actually come on. Five players who can come on and make a difference as well. You know, we, we, we yeah, uh, as we mentioned earlier, a number of times we have a bench with you know three or four players. You think, well, then they're, they're not, they're just making the numbers up, you know, they're, they're just there for the experience. Um, the other, the other side to that, of course, is if you bring on five subs, you know, you, you risk, um, you know, messing up the, the, the style of play, the fluidity, you know, of the game. Um, so it's a, it's a big task for, for Scott Lindsay to get his head round as well. You know, 
you can't just change five players for the sake of it and, and hope it's going to suddenly get better. You um, can ask John Sherwood how to do that. Oh, well, yeah. Sheridan, mm. Sheridan yeah. Um, yes. Like, <laughs> you know, but then you go, equally, you come with it. Yeah. I always think the quality is different, but you look at the amount of times, you know, Guardiola doesn't make any subs. You know, if it's working, it's working. You know, just because we've got five, we don't have to use them. Um, but I'm sure, you know, the club would have been working on these transfers, you know, for, for weeks. Um, I think Andy said, you know, most contracts don't run up till the end of the month. <laughs> There'll be contractual agreements that, you know, we, we know Conroy's not going to be here next year, but he, he's not announced where he's going. So there'll be all sorts of, you know, other players in similar situations. So I think, uh, yeah, like I said, with the next sort of week or 10 days uh, could be pretty exciting. Mm. Yeah, Dion Conroy's having a wonderful time in, in Malaga or somewhere and, and Dubai and places like that. So he's having a pretty good summer uh, by the look of it. Um, Ian says Carlisle should join the Scottish League. Um, they've got a lovely pub opposite Carlisle. It's really nice. You go in there, have a nice meal, a couple of pints. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, the Darlington fans have raised over £136,000 for next season's budget uh, for the running of the club. Not bad for a fan-owned National League North club. Come on, Darlow. Um, thanks, Ian. Um, also, seen ticket sales above where we were last season. Let's hope to get nearer the 6,000 target. James, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, J Jamie, here we are with just a few. I mean, it just seems like two minutes since the last game of last season, uh, that awful night at Vale Park. I mean, are you ready for the start of the new season? Uh, no. <laughs> I, think, I think part of it is we haven't had that. And I think that's where the downness comes from, is we haven't had that. A um, few signings to get excited about, a few signings to kind of debate and decide whether you like them or don't like them and get into that kind of conversation about what's going to be happening on a Saturday. But I'm pretty much fed up with doing the grass and doing the garden and stuff. So I guess I'm ready from that from that point of view of getting back to football. But um, I think it, 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 when it when it ends on a sour note like it did at, at Vale, you're always going to have that hangover over the summer, aren't you? Until, until you actually get back into a ground again and start feeling it and start kind of meeting your mates or whatever and talking about it properly, then it, it's always going to be that hangover until we start and win that first game again. I'm sure we'll all be hooked again and, and we'll all start believing we're going to win the league by Christmas. Um, all that stuff comes back once you go through the, the door on the, on the first game of the season. So give us a couple of signings, give a couple of things to get excited about. I, I think you'll soon start to see some of that positivity coming back, hopefully. Um that's that's get through Supermarine and Melksham and the exciting pre-season friendlies and that kind of thing and then it will soon be uh, it will soon be day one, won't it? Where we're we're full of hope along with the other ninety-two clubs that believe they're going to win the league. Yeah, what about that, Joe? Uh, obviously, you know it's. Uh, let me see, it's uh, it's uh, seven forty-eight according to your big clock. I'm just having a look behind you. Um, what about that? Getting ready for the new season. It doesn't seem like two minutes since the last season. Is, no, can I you know, get season fatigue or not? Um, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, there's been quite a bit to talk about, though, still, hasn't there, with the whole manager mm. thing dragging on. So it's not like we've had it, felt, it hasn't felt like we've had a, a break as such, whereas normally we would have. Um, I don't know. It's just a bit weird. I think, as Andy said earlier, I think the key for like the new season, though, is really trying to turn that home record round. Um, because that just completely did us last season. And I think, you know, if we set off on a start well playing at home, then that'll certainly get people sort of on side with Lindsay as well and sort of, you know, more people coming through the door again. So, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Although I'm going to miss the first one because it's starting early this season. I'm actually away um, for the first sort of couple of games. So I won't, I won't get to see a game for... Probably about the third game of the season, so that'll be a bit strange. Yeah, it will be. I, I guess a lot of people will be in the same boat because of uh, school holidays and things like that. Um, and starting so early, people will be away. Uh, Rob, what, what what do you want? Do you want a first game at home away? What's what? What are your thoughts on that? We've got such a great record, haven't we? It's first day of the season. It's Swindon Day uh, at the moment. Nobody else can compete with us, so. I don't think it matters whether we're home or away. We're going to win anyway, Vic. But um, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, I, I, it, it always works out and you get a northern side in your first home game or away, uh, in your first away game and a northern side generally in your first home game. So I think we're going to have a big trek, whether it's on the 
first Saturday or the second Saturday, it's going to be one of the Grimsby's, the Carlisle's, the Hartley Pools, the Barrows, the Tranmere's, the Bradford's, the Rochdale's. I can keep rattling them off if you want me to. There's enough of them. Um, but it's going to be, it's, it's, I would think we're due at home one, aren't we? We've been away on first day yeah. for a, quite a few games recently. So it would be nice for Scott Lindsay, I think, to be, uh, to have the opportunity to get in the <coughs> day one, to get in front of the fans as well. Hopefully, a full house. Who knows? I'm sure it probably won't be full, but fingers crossed we get that 10,000 plus gate again. And then hopefully start to build some momentum because that home form is so critical. We've all talked about it many, many times. Uh, and it did start to turn around. I think we sort of lost sight a little bit of the fact that the back end of last season was much better in the home, in, uh, home performances and the way we started to attack teams as well. We turned that, turned that corner a little bit. We'd been so... So slovenly, it seemed like at home. We just didn't want to go out and attack teams for three quarters of the season. But that last quarter of the season, we really went at teams at home. And hopefully, um, Scott Lindsay's taken that on board and he'll use that same level of impetus to, to spring us forward next season as well. Yeah, um, sure, mate. So, but we had near 10,000 against Carlisle first game last season, despite the holidays. It was a beautiful day. We lost, though, didn't we? So, But even so, that opt the optimism didn't drain away, did it? It was still there. I mean... Normally, you go on the first day of the season at home and you lose your first home match and people go, oh, here we go again. But that didn't dissipate, Andy, did it? That still carried on. No, I mean, I remember because we had that wonderful day at Scunthorpe to start with. Yeah. And then we were brought down to, to earth and it was quite worrying. Carlisle were just bigger and stronger and we thought this is going to be a long season because we obviously had that worry about the, the depth of the squad. Um. But then we played Tranmere at home and drew nil nil, but played quite well. But uh, you know, say so our, our waveform was just so spectacular all through the season that, as you say, that kept us going. But I'll throw one spanner in the works there. I can remember a few years ago going to Gillingham, um, oh. first game of the season. But did we not do well that? Uh, we did very well that day, but we did quite well that later on that season, if I recall. Lost five 0 didn't we? Yeah, we got yeah. stuffed five nil, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. stuffed that night. And then won the uh, following Tuesday in the League Cup four one at Milton Keynes, yeah. and had a really yeah. good season, if I remember rightly. Yeah. After that, got to the yeah. playoff final. So yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, James play. says. So, sorry, Rob? always comes back to playoffs. Whatever we do, we always talk about it. it always comes back to playoffs. I can't even think about yeah. the thought of playoffs next season. We've got to get up automatically. Just... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, James says home to Grimsby to start the season off. That would be all right, um, wouldn't it, Anthony? You know, get, let's get a home game. That would be really nice, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, like we just said, hopefully you start building a bit of momentum now, a bit of positivity. Big crowd, first game of the season. You know, get a win under our belts and go from there. The other, you know, the other thing is, you know, we finished last season with you know lots of big crowds. We can start if we can start like that this season and start winning at home. You know, I don't think there'll be any team that will bring enough to open up the Stratton Bank this season for away fans. So you know, yeah. there's another couple of thousand seats there. You know, just ready for for more Stratton fans. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, I think it's a really good opportunity this year with all these with all the northern teams. To sort of you know turn our fortunes around at home and, and make it that fortress that that it was well it seems like a long time ago now doesn't it that it's, uh, we never seem to lose at home but um, yeah so you know let, let's uh, I just want to get back you know we've got no World Cup or no Euros this summer um, you know I want to get that Port Vale game out of my memory because you know it yeah. wasn't a pleasant night and um, uh, yeah you know let's get, let's let's just get going again. Yeah, nobody will look back on that Port Vale experience with anything, um, well, other than, goodness, that was horrible. Let's put it like that, really. And Melksham in a couple of weeks, Jamie, um, it all starts again. And then Supermarine and uh, Woking and Eastleigh. And then a Cardiff game, of course, which is at 12 o'clock on a Saturday, um, which could be a very big attendance if uh, Mr Bale does sign for Cardiff. Who knows? But... Um, We'll see. So, uh, Melksham uh, in July, always a pleasurable experience. It's a great club to go to, I have to say. Um, and it, it is kind of a traditional thing to do now, isn't it? Yeah, a lot, along with the trialist A, trialist B, trialist C, and, and try to work out who the hell anyone is. So, I think it's, it's the, uh, 
who can Google a trial list quick enough game, isn't it? That, that normally uh, <laughs> exists at Melchon. But yeah, and, and, and it's part of us, I think the way I see it, it's part of us supporting the community. You know, it's the same with Supermarine, isn't it? That as, as the club who wants to be part of Wiltshire and wants to be kind of um, that kind of centre of everything, then we should be supporting and playing local derbies and, and supporting those smaller clubs because mm-hmm. the, the amount of investment it helps those clubs have for the start of their season, then it's all part of it, isn't it? But yeah, yeah it, it's, it's it's one of those that who knows what we're going to get and who knows who's going to turn up and, and half the fun is trying to work out whether any of that team will start on the first game of the season, isn't it? Yeah, and we always try to guess what the starting lineup will be four weeks before the start of the season, and it very rarely is the same as it appears in Melcham. Uh, Gary says we'll probably get Charlton in the Carabao Cup. <laughs> now, Joe, that would be a very, very interesting competition and game, wouldn't it? I, I, can you imagine that Charlton at the County Ground in the first round? Yeah, oh, that'd be funny, wouldn't that? I wonder what sort of reaction Garner would get. I really don't know. Hmm. I've got a feeling I might do. <laughs> yeah, what, 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 what sort of reaction you might get? It's interesting, isn't it? Because if you compare the return last week, uh, last season of Richie Wellens, he got quite a warm reception, I think. He did, yeah. Even though there were some people who didn't like the way he left. But I think with Ben Garner, it might be not such a warm reception. I just don't, I don't think the fans have much of an affinity with Garner, to be honest. I think we've spoken before about his sort of lack of engagement and didn't come across. I mean, I don't think he's said anything about Swindon since leaving, has he? I've, I've not seen anything anyway, which is unusual, even if it's only a one or two liner, you usually see something, don't you? Sort of, thanks for the time there. And there's not been anything. So I think, you know, that pretty much says what he felt about Swindon, which was not a lot. Well, it depends what kind of reception he gets from Charlton supporters as well by the end of pre-season. Well, <laughs> <laughs> how many after six games, uh, how it goes from. Um, actually, uh, Peter's reminded me, of course, it's the Women's Euros, uh, which kicks off in about 48 days' time. So that's a very big tournament, of course, to look forward to. Uh, it's replacing the World Cup in many respects. So a big tournament in this country. Pete, thank you very much indeed for this. Uh, Kerry says, please can someone remind me if new season ticket cards are being sent out to home addresses this year or do we collect them from the shop? Anthony. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I believe they are available, so I'd imagine they will be sending them out or you can collect them from the shop. That's what traditionally would happen, isn't it? So, um, but I, I don't know for definite. Okay. Um, I will, f- I will yeah. find out and I'll update everyone on our Twitter page. How about and I know there was, I, mine didn't work all of last season. Every single game I had to be blipped in. So I think there's a lot of people. That they have been doing some work on the, uh, on the turnstiles, I believe. Um, uh, and the system it uses. So, uh, Fingers crossed. Hope fingers crossed there'll be no big queues getting into <laughs> season. Well, let's hope not. Uh, right, let's go around. Um, I don't think Mr. Caddish is going to appear, which is a great shame because uh, we wanted to mark his retirement. Basically, he's had such a great career. Um, but anyway, uh, let's go around once again and and ask for your final thoughts. It's been a momentous day. It always is, Rob, when we get a new manager, stroke head coach, whatever they call them these days. And you always look ahead with, well, you, it's into the unknown. I think that's fair to say, but slightly less unknown with somebody who's been at the club. And, and I think, you know, I've seen one or two reactions. Ali, uh, the physio, has said how great it is to work with him. Alex, who works on the pitch, has said how great it is to work with him. So there's a lot of positivity about his appointment. I think that's what we've got to take from today, Vic, to be honest. I think that's the key the key message, really. I think we we can all have our own opinions on whether... We think he was the best man for the job and some will voice them and some won't. But the reality of the situation is he is the man in possession of the shirt, so to speak. And we want that possession of the shirt to lead Swindon to promotion next season. So we all need to get behind him. Um, and we need a big turnout on day one or day two, whatever that first home game is. And still need to keep following the team away from home in the numbers that we did last year, because that won the team enough points itself, I think. Mm-hmm. And, I think we, we've had so many knocks over the course of the last four or five years, whatever it might be. It feels like 40 or 50 years, but it, it, let's call it four or five. Um, that for, on a day when we do get a new manager, um, we should all be here thinking, let's wish him the best of luck. Let's get, let's make sure we do everything that we can to get behind him. And um, if it works, fantastic, because by the sound of things, 
he gets on with everyone at the club anyway. So it would be a really popular, successful appointment. Mm. Mm. Let's be honest, Andy. If he's successful, so then Tal is successful. That's the bottom line, isn't it? That's right. Very simple. If uh, if he can do what, uh, <clears throat> you know, that little bit more than we did last year, um, all the all the you can say all the jigsaw is is complete. It's not because obviously the next the next big task is to get these these uh, people signed. But the the thing we've been waiting for for three or four weeks. I mean, when was it? Crikey, when was the rumor started that Ghana was had been approached by Charlton, and everything has been in sort of like limbo. Now that's that's finished. The fixtures are out on Thursday. Hopefully, we now start seeing some people signed and re-signed. So yeah, it's just this is exciting time, you know. And it's still, what is it? Over a month to go before the start of the season. You've got the pre-season friendlies ready. So yes, it's it's a really really exciting time now. Um, you know, we've got we've got a small matter of dealing with sort of T20s, me and you, haven't we? But uh, you know, yeah. that's the all these people that haven't got you know cricket. Uh, I feel sorry for you, but we we have the stress. <laughs> of it. Uh, but no, very very exciting. Really looking forward to it now. Yeah, <clears throat> have a look at Rini Rusu's catch last Friday night well, against Gloucestershire. A thing of absolute beauty. That's all I can say. Um, yeah, I was going to say something really important then, um, but it's completely slipped my mind now. But I'll remember it in a minute. Uh, how positive are you then, Anthony? I mean, the point is, you know, it's a new, it's a new era, although not slightly as new as we normally get. But it is a new era, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's 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 something new. It's something to get behind. Um, you know, we know what he, what 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 he'll bring. You know, we know the players obviously like him. The, the staff are, are, are commenting on on what a good you know how pleased they are. Um, there's a good, you know, we've still got a good feeling around the club. We had a good feeling, you know, at the start of last season uh, and it's still going. I mean, e even, you know, prior seasons, you know, it's not often we go from one season to the next feeling positive, is it? Um, there's a good, you know, good feel amongst the staff and the fans. And um, so I, we, didn't, we haven't touched on it, but, you know, in terms of staff, how well our strength and conditioning team did last season. Mm, yeah, you know, to still nice. have them on board this season, it, I think is massive. We 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 had very few injuries last season, and the likes. You know, Johnny Williams played more games than any than any other season he'd ever played last year. Um, I would say that like Baldry played the last few games of the season were the best I've seen him in a in a, in a Swindon shirt. Um, you know, uh, so. You know, there's there's plenty plenty to be um, to be positive about. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's bring it on. Yeah, um, Rich says, "Beam us up, Scott." Uh, well, there we go. Let's get up, Jamie. It's as simple as that. There's a bit of positivity for you. Uh, what do you what do you think? I mean, it, let's 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 finish with a smile on our face. Hey, eh? we've got a new head coach. You know, I've no doubt you're bringing new players. That process is ongoing. We've got a technical director in place. The pitch is already looking pretty damn magnificent. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot to be positive about. I think the biggest plus last season we all talked about was you had the club, the supporters and everyone pulling in the same direction. I think it would be, it would be such a massive shame if we didn't start the season the same way because that, that clearly got everyone going in the right direction and, and hopefully will get us a good start to the season again. So I think whatever your feelings are, whether you're disappointed, whether you're not or whatever, ultimately we need to be that one 10,000 kind of speaking voice in the same direction. And and then that's see where it goes. Because I think if if we don't get that positivity going, it would be a shame it was a one season wonder. Because mm -hmm. it's a damn sight more interesting to support a club that is all pulling in the right direction and, and it's positive about the game than it is with fans bickering with each other or disappointed or, or not wanting to go. So... That's that's kind of get to that first day of the season, that first game, and see see where we can go. I think that's the only way we can do it. And, and I echo it. How much have we invested in the pitch this year? You know, I mean, not every club's going to have done that. And Marcus has got it looking fantastic already. So yeah, again, that, that's see that as a massive positive because we didn't have to do that. And there's a lot of clubs that won't do that. Um, certainly at our level, anyway. No, it looks fantastic. Um, Joe, let's be positive, eh? I yeah, know. No, I agree. I think um, I think the negativity has probably come from how long it's taken. If it had been announced a few days after Ghana had gone, I don't think there'd be this there'd be this level of mm, from people because I think it, obviously the names in the frame. I think by the time we get to the first game of the season, 
everybody will just be behind the club, won't they? So, and you know, that's that's what we need to happen. Like we say, you know, get a, get a good run going at home, early doors, and um, you know, you'll have everyone behind you, and you know, it's a new uh, new season. Yeah, but absolutely. You just need to get out of League Two. <laughs> we can't do yes. one. Yeah, with all due respect to the uh, teams in League Two, I don't want to be there much longer. It's that simple, really. I am kind of fed up. We seem to have spent more time in League Two in the last 10 years than we have in any other league, which is, you know, depressing, beyond depressing, I think, quite frankly. Uh, Chris, are you there? Uh, I am. I am. I was. She's I am. In Coronation Street again. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I was actually. There's still loads of comments coming through. That was the reason I was uh, a bit thin. So James has just yeah. asked, "Who's going to be our number two Then, what's everybody's opinion on that? Is Marshall still at the club, or is he gone? Does anybody know? That's another question we've had, which we yeah. don't know. I, I think he's gone, to be honest. Okay. So, um, you know. So maybe okay. that's. I'm sure it'll all come out uh, in the next few days. Hopefully, there's uh, a lot more announcements uh, on their way now that um, Scott's in his position. So, oh, and James has just said he's gone. So, yeah, uh, there we are. Definitely gone. <laughs> um, yes. I've had a some time ago. To, uh, I, you you know about this, Chris, don't you? The um, only fools and horses, uh, only fools and three courses at the county ground. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's in July sometime, isn't it? Um, yes. The starter is prawn cocktail. The main is bangers, mashed peas, and onion gravy, and the dessert is eaten mess. That, that's not a political comment. That's a, a dessert. So uh, eaten mess. Um, didn't you, Rob? Didn't you go and see only some fools and horses, the stage show in London? Did, Absolutely, it's fabulous. I recommend it to anybody. It's brilliant. I'm I've not seen... sure this is a stage show, but well, sorry, Chris, go on. No, I was going to say, I've seen um, something um, like it's a, a dining experience where you have Only Fools and Horses playing, doing little sketches as you have the um, your meal and things like that. And they're very, very funny. So, so yes. Yeah, so if anybody's interested in that, um, speak to Ray Murphy at the club. Um, he's organising that. Lovely. So That's number two, then, Vic, probably going to be Boise, I take it. <laughs> Trigger probably with his <laughs> with his broom that he's had for seventeen years, but it's All right, Dave. seventeen different handles and seven. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that'd be great, wouldn't it? Uh, so there we are. I think we're done. Yeah, some just just mentioned uh, um, Frenchie for number two. Not oh, a bad shout. Good shout. Actually, no. yeah. Not a bad yeah, shout. Yeah, very good shout. No, no. I wouldn't. I think that would um, be very popular with people, especially after the end of last season that he had when he, mm. when he was magnificent, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, so yeah. yeah, well, everybody's nodding, so that would go down quite well. I think, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, be happy with that. <laughs> we'll be happy with that. Brilliant, yeah, yeah. thanks ever so much. Um, sorry about uh, it's been a bit disruptive tonight. Um, I'm hope everything is all right with Paul because it's very unusual he hasn't said anything, he hasn't messaged or anything. So, I, I hope everything is okay. Um, and we will get him on again at some point. Um, thank you for the panel for stepping in so quickly. Um, thanks for getting out the shower, Joe, for us. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Anthony, for leaving me to do the questions while you sort of just had a chat. You're so, welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and the last thing I'd like to say is just play, um, say thank you to Andrew Steele Davis. Um, he yes. sent a tweet out today um, saying that he's now finished with Swindon. He's uh, moving to uh, to America to fulfill his dreams over there uh, with his journalism. So um, just want to put on paper, thank you very much to Andrew. He has certainly helped us as the OAC, um, OSC even, um, very much in the past. So um, hope everything goes well for you, Andrew. And uh, don't uh, don't be a stranger, keep in touch. So, no. so thank I'm you sure very much. Ask, we could ask him lots of in-depth questions about the um, NHL uh, playoffs. Yeah, which Couldn't I wouldn't we? understand anything about, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> playoffs again, playoffs again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Um, the fixtures are out on Thursday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I can get my social calendar up together after that. So we will see you. We will be back next week uh, in what 
guys I do not know at the moment but we will sort something out for next week um, and if anything special happens you never know we might put some on social media that we're back again so okay so thank you very much and we will see you all soon cheerio bye